right, guys, welcome to another special episode of the Shrink Coach Podcast. We do this every month with Vince Gabriel, founder of Gabriel Fitness Performance and Fitness Business University. Vince, coming straight from Providence, the Perform Better Functional Training Summit. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing all right. All right. So the summits are over. So I kind of, this is the time, like I'm even going to do this with Coach Boyle with we can talk about your topic, right? So it's uh, it's almost like, you know, they black out baseball. You know, you can't go to, a, you can't watch a baseball game in your hometown if they don't sell it out. So we're allowed to talk about lectures uh, now. So I want to, I do want to go over your five ways to get more small group clients today. But I, Vince, I get a lot of people asking me about speaking on the Perform Better Tour. So I always say, first of all, um, you know, Make sure you're practicing and uh, practicing learning how to speak. That's what I love about Jenny Rerick. I know you've done some stuff with Thomas Plummer, but for me, Jenny Rerick's Fit to Speak is, is an amazing um, uh, resource for for all fitness people to be able to learn how to uh, communicate, not just speaking, but um, but it's also about kind of showing up. So before hmm. we get into um, five ways to get more small group clients. I, I've heard the story before and I love it. Uh, and I thank God the bar was not there that it closed down when I was in Chicago with you, because I'm sure I would have been <laughs> tricked in going there. So yeah. I, I do want you to talk about, Hey, you know, how do you get, how does people, how do people get on? I know they, you, you're, you're with like a hundred, you have a hundred gym owners that want to speak on the perform better tour. And they got to be asking you, Vince, how do we get on this? But how do we do so, it? So the real story of how I, I got on was um, I uh, I talked to Charlie, Charlie Weingroff, and I was uh, an attendee for 15 years. And I said, Charlie, what do I do? I want to uh, speak on the Perform Better Tour. And he's like, well, you got to go talk to Chris if you want to do that. And he's like, the next seminar is in Chicago. Just go out there and, uh, and talk to Chris. And uh, I was like, well, when is it? And he goes, it's tomorrow. And <laughs> I literally, <laughs> I jumped on a flight um, and flew to Chicago for that specific reason only. I hadn't, I had planned to go to the Providence one, right? But I wanted to fast track this and I, I wanted to get this kind of moving. Um, and I ended up talking, you know, with Chris and he's an amazing person, amazing guy. Um, he's so nice. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. He's such a cool Yeah, guy. I mean, yeah, totally. he's the best. Um, so, you know, I, I had, you know, a couple of people recommending me, um, Charlie Boyle, plumber, people like that. And so it was kind of like, um, I, he, he, he knew I was, you know, coming to talk to him about it and we got to talking and we had a great conversation and I was like left and I was like, I think it went okay. I'm not really sure. And, um, I was sitting at the bar and I was with big Tom, you remember big Tom, right? And me and big Tom, and, and me, me and big Tom. Um, we're sitting at the bar and we were just like in for the night tired and all of a sudden the perform better crew comes to the um uh come to the bar and they're all like rowdy you know all those guys are all like getting ready, <laughs> rearing up ready to go and they're like all loud and stuff and um so we start talking to them while they're at the bar and they were leaving for dinner and they were like hey we're going to, to a restaurant you guys want to come and i was like yeah all right, cool. And I was like, I guess. And I was like, this was like, you know, bonus time. I didn't expect something like this. I kind of expected just to talk to Chris for a few minutes, but not to be invited to go out to dinner with the Perform Better crew. And we ended up going to this restaurant. And I don't think you were there. I think it was me and Martin. I think Charlie was I was there. not there. You were yeah. not there. Uh, but Martin Rooney was there. Martin, Martin and I, every time we see each other, we tell the story. But um, so it's one at one of these German restaurants where they um, – they they uh, they go around to each table and the waitress comes with this huge wooden paddle and they like pick someone at the table like bend over the table and the waitress takes this running start and smacks you in the ass with a paddle right and so they get the lady gets to the table and she's like all right who's up and chris looks at me and points his finger and goes vince get over here and so I get up to the table and I got my hands on the table and bent over and Chris 
is like right in front of me, like deadlocked in my eyes. I think he's probably he had to, <laughs> he, was, he was three or four steins of beer. The beers are like you know uh, you can't see this on um, the beers are huge. So he had three of those, <laughs> and he's like looking at me, you know, dead in the eyes. And he's like Vince, if you flinch, there's not a chance you'll ever speak on the Perform Better tour. And he goes, uh, he's like, if you can hold still and hand just and and hold it and hang in there. I'll consider you. And uh, so she smashed me three times and I did not move a muscle. I was like, I came all the way out here to Chicago. I'm not screwing this up. Um, and I didn't move a muscle on that. Le- that next year, I was uh, a speaker on the Perform Better Tour. So th- did you have to st- walk? That's the story. Yeah, we did walk home, actually. Yeah, um, <laughs> that, that that is the actual story. But 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 I, what I want to do is tell more of the real story. Right. And the real story is. um how I created the relationships to be able to even be in the position. Right. Cause, cause you know, you know how it is like Chris, the way Chris works is like, he's a relationship guy perform better as a relationship company, right? That's what they're built on. They're built on strong, really good long. I mean, if you look at their staff, some of their staff has been there forever. I mean, I knew Conrad who's my rep for my um, equipment uh, he, I'm going on a close to a 20 year relationship with him. I mean, it's nuts, right? So they're a relationship business. And so the lesson I always tell people is, yeah, I showed up to Chicago. I got slapped in the ass with the paddle. And then all of a sudden I got to speak. But the real answer is I showed up to perform better for 15 years and was a student of that program for 15 years. But I was a student in three levels. Okay. And this is what I want to teach everybody, which I think will be informative, right? So there's a, there's three levels of what you can go to learn from live events and things like this, right? So the first level is you show up and hopefully don't fall asleep, right? You show up to these lectures, you got your notebook, you're taking notes, you're listening to what they're saying. You're thinking about how it applies to your business and you go home and you take action and you get something out of it, right? So that's a very valuable thing, you know, to do, right? So that's layer one. Layer two is you got this expert in front of you, someone like Greg Cook or Martin Rooney or Mike Boyle, right? And they, these people are like, they're the best that they're the best in the world at what they're doing. That's why they're there. Right. And they're human beings, right. They're not like getting from the, from the perform better stage, going behind the curtain and getting on their private jet and flying home. They're not doing that. They're coming off the stage and they're hanging out and they're talking. Right. And so, I always kind of like, it's like, all right, like these guys are around, like boils right over there. Like, I'm just going to go talk to them. Right. And so the layer number two is the insights that you can get from presenters um, during the conference outside of their talk. That's maybe you asking questions during their talk. That's maybe you going up to them afterwards and asking a question. That's maybe you talking to them at the social that Perform Better always has. That's maybe you grabbing them in the hallway. That's maybe you grabbing them and asking them to go to coffee the next morning or or dinner that night. Hey, can I buy you? I mean, I've had many people offer to buy me dinner at the Perform Better thing, like clients, like random people. Um, I always decline, but it's very nice of them, you know, to do, because typically usually there's plans like, you know, ahead of time and stuff like that. But I know I did that with several people, several different presenters where I asked them to to grab a cup, let me buy a cup of coffee, let me buy lunch and vendor at the thing. Right. Um, so that's layer two is like, while you're there, are you leveraging the, the, the opportunity to get inside the minds of these, these people? Here's layer number three. And this is what nobody ever does. Do you follow up with them after? Nobody does. I don't understand why, but nobody does. And I have um, several instances in my life where I have personal relationships with very, very, very high level people that most people do not have personal relationships because of this process. One, imagine this, you just thank them. You just thank them. You just say, hey, 
I saw you speak. I was in the audience. I was the guy, that big goofy. I always call myself the big goofy Italian guy, right? The big goofy Italian guy that came up to you and I was asking you this question about this. And I just wanted to send you this note and thank you. Um, you did a great job. And people like to be told good job, right? People like to be told good job. And and what, what most people think is like because someone's speaking on a stage that they're like untouchable or they don't need, they don't need that. And it's like, that's not true. You know, that's not true at all. And so I always made the habit of following up with people afterwards, right? Um, and then what I always made the habit of doing after that is after I followed up, I wanted to do business with those people, right? So I came, I first became good friends with Charlie through doing business with him. I thanked him. And actually, it's funny. The story of Charlie, how I met Charlie, was being on – I listened to him on your podcast, right? And he was on your podcast. And I was, um, I love the podcast. I emailed them that, you know, awesome podcast. It was great. Thanks so much. And then um, I said, by the way, you know, do you do private consulting? And he said, yes, I do. And, and I hired Charlie Weingarl for a day to come up to my facility. And I said, I want you to pick apart my training system. Here's everything we do. I want you to pick it apart. I, I have no, I have no ego. I have, I'm not going to get offended. I want you to tell me how we can make this better. And for eight hours, Charlie sat with us and said, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. This was way back in the day, early Gabriel Fitness days, early. This is 2010 or something like that. And you would be mind boggled of how much, how little money I paid Charlie for that day, right? Because he was like kind of just getting into it, right? I don't, he wasn't even speaking at Perform Better at the time. Right? This was even before he was speaking um, yeah. and everything like that. So it was a while ago, right? But I became, and then I, you know, I started referring him clients and then I brought him and I actually brought him back up again, did this. And I started referring him more patients. And then we, you know, create over that created a friendship over time. Same thing with Tom Plummer. Yep. I attended all of his lectures. I bought all his books. I did all this. I hired him for private consulting. Right. Um, so the best way you can start to build relationships with people who want to start with, you know, and, you know, I can call Plumber, you know, anytime I want and talk shop for three hours, right? I can call Charlie if I have a problem. If one of my kids has an issue with an orthopedic issue, I'm calling Charlie, right? Because I know it's like, but there's a personal relationship that was built there. And I think yep. that that is, um, and I'm not saying you have to do that or take that route, but um, there's, a, there's a deeper level that you can go with your learning. And there's people that are at the top of their game that when you become friends with them right when they consider you a colleague um you're going to be able to um you're going to be able to get a lot more knowledge than you could from just reading in their book and the cool thing is i've been on the other side of it now right so now i've been able to sit in a room with some high high level people people that like like asking me questions, like I'm not going to mention who, but like there's people that, that I used to sit in the stands and have my, that are in, and have, you know, in awe, just be like, Oh my God, these people are the smartest people that are texting me and asking me business questions. And it's just like, yep. it's weird how it comes full circle, but you have to kind of provide value. So, so the whole thing about speaking and perform better because a lot, because we start, this is how we started. A lot of guys are asking me, like, oh, how do you speak it before? What do you do? What do you do? Well, you don't just like fill out an application. I'll tell you that right now. If you yeah. fill out an application and Chris doesn't know who the hell you are, there's a 0% chance that you're getting on. A 0% chance, right? So you have to show up. You have to be around. You have to be interested. You have to shake hands. You have to, you know, and obviously you have to get up there. And if you do get a shot, you know, you got one shot, you know. You only get one yeah. shot to, you'll get two chances. Like you get one shot to stay or go, you know, and most, absolutely most go right. Because you can only, I mean, I look at the, you know, we were looking at the list and, you know, people have been there 25 years. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more because you, you look at with me, I, you said nobody does it, but I did it. I oh, emailed Chris after every conference after every edu i said chris this was awesome thanks for your hospitality blah 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 i emailed mike mark for and gray cook obviously you know with mike you know you said about asking a question when functional strength coach one 
when there was two spots open, there was you had to email Mike to say who you were, what your background was. It was all high level guys. I was probably the lowest level. I just said, hey, Mike, uh, you know, I just got back from the Exos mentorship. I work at Equinox and, uh, you know, I, I have functional training for sports. I'd love to come to functional training coach one. He goes, yes, you're in. I remember you asked me a question about functional training. And then I went up to Mike at perform better to say, Hey, I'm coming to your functional training coach one. And we had a beer together. And then we had beers at functional strength coach one. And then I got him. I introduced him to Gerald Cooper Smith at Equinox. He was the head of mm. Equinox fitness and she started booking him. I booked him at Frank Dolan's place. So I'm starting to help make Mike money. Right. And all this stuff. And that was the way we did it. But always having that communication. I do want to say you mentioned, Hey, ask people you want breakfast. You want coffee. Try to do that ahead of time, which you did to me when we were going out to the Cosgrove's mentorship. That's you right. I forgot time. about that. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Aunt, I, you know, we know each other through traincoach.com, but right, I would we love didn't, to we see didn't, that. We didn't yeah. know each other personally, right? We yeah. Didn't. And then yeah, we yeah. went, we ended up not just going to do, we went to uh, Anaheim Ducks game because now <laughs> guys, I would have went to that by myself or asked somebody there, like, Hey, I'm going to the game. But Vince contacted me ahead of time, and we spent like three hours in traffic getting there. Awesome. And then we went to the game. We like that was cemented our relationship. Totally, yeah. That I think was you even had yeah, your yeah. your in laws truck or something, right? Didn't you have your in laws yeah, truck? Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So we went down there. So there that's you go. Hilarious. Um, but you know, really, uh, you know, that's real life stuff. It's not bullshit. Now Vince isn't saying this is the stuff that we did to kind of develop and cement those relationships and, you know, bought a lot of product from perform better too. Yeah. To be honest. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I think it's like, and that's what I love about, you know, we have a mastermind that's 102 gym owners in it right now. And it's like, those guys are creating those relationships with each other. Now, like the, we got yeah. guys that have become best friends, you know, within, you know, so it's not even just, you know, um, a, a business relationship, right? There's personal like bonds that are formed through the industry. Some of my best friends are from the fitness industry, right? You know, I have a good solid handful of friends from back home and friends from college, but I have another really strong handful of friends like that. I consider very, very good friends um, that I've met. And it's just like, if you really look at happiness, right? I think there's a study done on happiness. It's just like the number one indicator of happiness is your relationships, right? So if you want to have, you know, happiness, you know, have really good relationships. If you look at, you know, what it's like when we all go, you know, I had dinner with um, Frank Nash, you know, on Thursday night. We do it every year, every Thursday night before Perform Better, he and I have dinner. It's like a tradition. That's what we do. And it's just like catching up. It's amazing. It's just like, it's really powerful stuff. So um, it. This is a this is a business um, that uh, there are a lot of people that are willing and able to help you uh, get where you want to go, but you got to do your part you know, to put yourself in front of them to be able to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely, good stuff. Well, speaking of which, let's talk about what you were, you know, what you it was a. Told. I tell you, room it was a it was a packed room. It was a packed room, and I was a little nervous because Boyle was speaking at the same time. But there was a good amount of people at the total total amount of people These at the conference. People so. are so tired of that guy. They, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I'm not tired of him. It's, it, I think he's amazing. But um, yeah, it, it was a really really packed room, and it was a great energy room. It was a really really good uh room i had to yell at some guy because he kept asking questions and i was like dude you gotta stop asking questions right um because it gets you know how it is it interrupts your flow right you know you're in the flow of speaking and like some guy asks a question i was like oh, i don't want this and you know what about what about one of those what about this questions well what if you did it like this i was like i don't know you tell me like <laughs> why are you asking me? Right? <laughs> try uh, it and right. report back next yeah. year um, but yeah, my topic was five ways to get more smugger personal training clients. And the cool thing was like, you know, everyone in the, almost everyone in the audience, it was like well over a hundred people, um, had, be, were currently doing smugger training. So it's really cool to see that, you know, what was started originally by the Rick Mayo's of the world and Bill, per, not, um, uh, Thomas Plummer 
and um, and the Cosgroves, obviously, you know, what started, you know, this whole small group thing, which took a really, honestly, a really long time. I mean, I, I believe it, it's taken way too long for people to catch on and be like, all right, this is a model where you can make a lot of money doing it. And I think a lot of people, they did one-on-one and they dabbled in it and they're like, oh, let me try the small group thing. And like 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 sticking a baked potato on a steak menu, like, oh, yo, now we have baked potatoes. Like, it's not going to work like that. Like small group training works when it's the thing that you do, not some side dish or something that you just put on the menu. Um, but that is why so many people have failed with it. That's honestly why so many big box gyms fail with it. So many big box gyms fail with it because they're like, oh, we do small group training now, right? And the reason why they they fail at it is because it's another item on the menu like, oh, we have a juice bar. Oh, we do small group training. Oh, we do this. And they don't treat it almost like a separate company or a separate business. And that's really what actually makes it fly. And what makes it grow. So, so what I did was, you know, so I think the whole business model thing in and of itself is a whole nother topic. I really focused on, you know, how to get new clients. That was a kind of my um, focus. And I unpacked, I unpacked five things. So here's the first one. Um, the first one was just the, the clarity around target market, right. And understanding who you're marketing to and who you're trying to get to buy this. This is like the most important part of marketing anything, right? I have people come to me all the time with business ideas and like, Hey Vince, I got this coaching program. Hey Vince, I got this. And I'm just like, well, who do you want to buy it? And that's like the only question I ask because that's the most important thing. It's just like the, the, the person that's on the other end, that's going to, that you're going to trying to solve the problem for is the most important thing to focus on when you're considering marketing and most people don't do that. They skip to, Oh, I want to try this Instagram hack. Oh, I want to try this Facebook ad. Oh, I want to do send emails. Right. But at the end of the day, they don't really have clarity um, around, you know, who they're trying to get into the gym. And there's really three levels, right. To those people there, there, there's, there's the geographic. So it's like, where are these people? Right. And, and the, the geographics is interesting too, because it's nothing to think about like this. So geographics, what do people think of where they live, right? Where their home is. But if you really think of geographics also, it's where are they right now? So and it's 429. Where is the mom of three right now? You know where she is? Picking up kids somewhere. She's in her car. Yeah. That is exactly <laughs> where she is. She's in the car. My wife is right now sitting in the jujitsu parking lot waiting for my son to get out. By the way, Joey had a huge match the other day. It was absolutely incredible. It was, it was absolutely incredible. I love jujitsu more than anything in the world. I, I'm doing it and I'm terrible at it, but for my son, who's two years in and about to get his gray and black belt, it is like, absolutely. Every kid should do jujitsu. Every child living should do it. It's amazing. Um, but, um, so there's geographics, right? But it's like, where are they right now? And start to think about that question. Where are they right now and that will lead you down to the path of who are you going to do joint ventures with um what type of marketing are you going to be doing so what is it you know what what would you originally think if they're in their car oh well let's market on the radio right well what are they doing in their car they're on their damn phone that's what they're doing on their car they're not yeah. reading books they're not they're not getting out and exercising right they're on their phone and they're doing this they're scrolling the for an hour they got 60 minutes of scroll time and that's what they're doing so you should be on social and you should be running ads on facebook because they got that thing on their phone and they're sitting there for an hour that's where they are so that's geographics so understand where they are where do they live right and obviously you want to you know target you know the areas close to your gym right but also start to think about where they are physically throughout their day. Uh, the second piece is the demographics, right? Demographics are the facts, right? This is like, you know, how old they are and how much money they make and, you know, how many children they have and what their job is and all that stuff. That's facts. That's simple, easy to know, easy to find. And that's all the basic stuff, right? And the third layer of, uh, of who they are is the psychographics, right? And the psychographics is why they buy, right? It's the psychology part of it. It's 
what is the thing that they're staying up late at night, staring at the ceiling, worried about, right? And I promise you this, they're not worried about the lack of a small group personal trainer in their life. They're worried about something else. And it is up to us as gym owners to be able to understand the problems that these people have that are going to cause them to want to hire us to do personal training. So that's the layers. And I always tell the story of Vanessa when I got her, um, you know, the story was I got, you know, Vanessa likes vodka and lemonade and, or sorry, vodka and lemon, right? So vodka and water with lemon. And um, I don't know, it was like a couple of months ago. And I put, just started putting a bunch of sugar in it. And she's like drinking it and she's drinking it down. She's like, this is delicious. Oh my God. Like she gossled one. She's like, can I get another one? So I was like, I made her another one real quick. Right. All of a sudden I make her three vodka lemonade spiked, right. Passed out 8 a.m. Done. Done. Um, 8 p.m. Sleep, eight, yeah. 8 p.m. Sorry. Um, sleeps through her workout, misses the workout. Right. And we're on date night that night. And she's like, I feel like such shit. She's like, I feel awful right now. I feel like I want to puke. One reason because you poisoned me. But the other reason was that I didn't work out this morning. And I didn't work out and it threw me off. And I didn't have my normal routine and didn't have my day. And my day was crap. The kids were on my nerves. I'm just like, when she was just like going at it, right? She was in rare form, Vanessa. Um, um, and, and I started taking out my notepad or my, my phone and taking notes. And I was like, what's it like, honey, when you don't work out? And she's telling me and she's rattling off the list and she kind of knows what I'm doing at that point. So she starts rolling her eyes. She's like, you're never not working. Right. And then I was like, well, what's it like when you do work out? And she starts rattling off. Things. But this is like the stuff that people, this is the, the, the inside the mind, right? They always say mm-hmm. what, you know, the job of the marketers to go inside the mind, enter the conversation already going on in the prospect's mind. Well, what I did was I entered my wife's mind of all the stuff that goes to her minds when she doesn't work out, when she does work out, what it means to her, what it, what it means to her when she doesn't work out. And all of that is beautiful, beautiful things that I can put in my emails, in my ads, in my everything, in my marketing. And the problem is with people that they don't identify that person first, right? And you got to identify that person first. Who is it? And then once you go identify that person, you have to go deep inside their mind and figure out why they buy. So that was kind of the first point um, that we we covered. The um, second point, I'm just going to keep going. Uh, the second point was the uh, marketing glove. I talked about this a bunch on the show before, so I'll go over this one quickly. Um But one of the things was, uh, so very quickly, the marketing glove, those of you who haven't um, heard this before, is there needs to be multiple ways that your business is generating leads. If you only have one, you put your business at risk, right? Like people did in 2014 when they marketed on Facebook and the only thing they had was... um, you know, uh, uh, they put a piece of dog poop on Facebook and all of a sudden they got all these leads, right? And then all of a sudden Facebook changed and they panicked because they had zero leads coming in because of Facebook dried up, right? And so what you got to understand is that your marketing department needs to have multiple ways to generate leads to make your company strong, right? And so I start, what I started to do is I started to ask the audience what they were doing right now. Okay. And what I asked them specifically was, and some of them you could tell, like they were like almost a little, I don't really know. I don't really know. And the question I asked them was, where did your last client come from? And I had them reverse engineer that process. Tell me exactly where your last client came from. And when you kind of reverse engineer where your last client came from, you can start to see what are the things that you are using for marketing and what are the fingers of your glove. But the big point was, was this, you got to have multiple things happening. If you got one, start two. If you got two, two, three, and, and, and on and on and on, on we go. So that was the marketing glove, but you need, um, you need multiple things happening. If you just rely on one thing or you just rely on word of mouth, honestly, it's going to be a tough long climb. Okay. Uh, 
Number three was uh, the follow-up process, right? And um, I've also done stuff on this before, um, yep. but basically the fortune of your business in the follow-up. And I and I have a slide that I put up there and I basically say, if I was, um, if I was to buy a business, one of the first things that, that I would do is I would pull the list of unconverted leads. I would pull the list of unconverted trial members and consults. I would pull the list of um, former members and then pull the list of clients that are frozen, like have frozen their membership. Right. And I would take those four lists and I would start texting, calling, emailing, Facebook messaging, all of those people. Um, and it's likely that I'd probably make my money back um, from buying that business. Right. And so what I think gym owners don't understand is that is how important this part of their business is and the massive amount of money that people are leaving on the table by not having systems built around this stuff. Right. So you, you definitely need that initial follow-up process, right? You need that, you know, if an, if a lead comes in, the faster you get to them, the bigger, the likely the larger the likelihood that you're going to get that person as a client. But the problem is there's only a certain percentage of those people that we are going to buy. People are like, you know, people like consider like someone not buying as a dead lead. And that's like not even further from the truth. Like they're not dead leads. They're just not ready to buy yet. Like you can't force people of when they're actually going to buy. You can only be there when the problem that you're trying to solve um, or they want solved is moves to the top of their to-do list that day. And that's why you need long-term follow-up in addition to short-term follow-up, right? So you need a long-term, you need to be emailing people three times a week, right? That's why your emails are so important is because your emails are the things that are getting people that maybe opted in for your gym six months ago but they're still getting your emails. If they opt in six months ago and you call them three times and they don't call you back and then you never contact them again, they're gone forever. Like they ain't coming in, they're gone, right? So you got to understand that you have this opportunity and it doesn't take a lot, but there's there's a fortune in your follow-up process. That is number, that was point number three. Three. Um, saying a lot of words here. It's funny, Vanessa and I were watching church uh, on Sunday night and there's, it was a marriage thing on church. And it basically said that, uh, men, uh, only use 7,000 words a day and that women use like 27,000. Really? So on the, unfortunately I have to tell Vanessa on the days I record this podcast with you that I've used all my words and, uh, <laughs> I'm not able to speak when I get home. Sorry. Used, sorry. I hit 8,000. I hit 8,000 on the podcast today. Um, okay, so number four is referrals. And, you know, I, I I always love the example of this. It's like, think about the um, the phone call you get, Ant, that someone calls up and says, hey, um, my name's John. I'm really good friends with, with Mike, who's been a client of yours for like five years. And Mike was raving about you guys. And I'm out of shape. I need to get rolling. I don't care what it costs. Sign me up. Like, doesn't even want to come in for a console. Like, I don't yeah. care what it costs. Sign me up. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'll sign your commitment and pay in full. Right? Like, think about that phone call like that you get, right? And imagine, like, getting a lot of those. Right? And imagine how great that is for your business to get a lot of those. The problem is, and that does happen, right? Um but it usually happens rarely and it happens by accident. And what we need to do in our companies is start to create events, things, processes that happen that give people the opportunity to refer. Right now, the, the caveat to this is you got to do a damn good job, right? Um, you, you you gotta you do gotta get referrals, but you do gotta get some referrals by accident, right? Because that just means you're doing a good job. If you're not getting any referrals at all, it probably means you're not doing that great of a job, right? So it's almost like you should get some, but you're gonna get who you would have gotten anyway. 
and the goal of, of having a referral system is that you're doing things, that you're putting systems in place that are actually generating referrals. And then when I, I went through um, a few different intentional tactics for that, but it's basically like, all right, you do this, this thing that you did generated someone calling you and coming in um, to sign up for your gym, right? And the more of those that we can do, the more referrals that we're going to get, right? So I kind of went through that process. And then I went through the whole process of gifting. Um, I talked about what they need to give, um, you know, what it, what is the um, the prize that they should be giving uh, to people if they do refer. And then I talked about, you know, how to use T-shirts and logos and shakers and all that stuff. I do. Uh, I yeah, do want to mention on. before you go on is th- uh, guys, episode 361. Point five, the our special episode with Vince. He did. He went pretty deep into the whole referral thing. It's a really, really good episode talking about all like what he just said: intentional tactics and the reward system, system and this omnipresence. Um, that's that's and, actually uh, that's actually a good point, Ant. That we we can almost make this episode like a uh, an episode where they can kind of go and go deeper. Because I also did one on follow up with you, I believe. Yes, you, um, did. you yeah, did. Yeah, so maybe we can kind of like when you put the points in the show notes, you can yeah, link I will. the other show. Yeah, I will. Um, Absolutely. That's, that, that's a great point. And the marketing glove, same thing. We've done that a yeah. few times. I will point everybody back to that. Yeah, so now you can go a lot deeper. I'm kind of scraping the surface just for time's sake, yeah. you know, for these today. But yeah, I think we did an almost, not not for each one, but we pretty much did an individual podcast. Um uh, for each of these. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be helpful. Yeah. And the last one is, uh, something I, I called, I created called the angel list. And the story goes is that, um, there was a guy named John who, uh, when I first opened my business, I was training his three kids and he was really liking what I was doing with his three kids. So he started sending me clients and like my phone started ringing off the hook. This is back when I had a flip phone, right? Um, my flip phone started ringing off the hook, which I do believe Aunt are potentially making a comeback. Vanessa and I have been I know. Talking, cool. Vanessa and I have been talking about getting our kids flip phones, um, which I would love to do. I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna be able to pull it off, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh, so so this guy John and he started referring me all these clients and my phone's ringing off the hook and people are like I'm like, how did you hear about me? And they're like, John had it. I'm like, how did you remember me? John had it, John had it, John had it. And so this guy, and I was like, I said this out loud, I was like, this guy's like my angel. Because he was sending me all these clients on all these business. So I was like, imagine if I had more John Haddad. And that's what, exactly what I did. I wrote down a bunch of different people like John that were connected in the community. And I started calling them and reaching out to them and creating relationships with them. And all of a sudden, I had one John Haddad and then it became two and three and four and five and six. And my entire business was built around this concept. My entire business. People are 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 very, you know, a lot of people like are, I mean, we hit, a million seven figures in revenue faster than most gyms have ever even heard of. Right. And we want, we didn't run any Facebook ads before we hit seven figures. It was all local grassroots marketing. And it was really built around these relationships of this angel list. So this is a powerful thing. This is something we still do today. Not, I don't want to hear like, Oh, Vince, that's very 2008 of you. And like, no, this still works um, today. Go out and, and find people in your community that essentially already have a list of people that you want, right? So think about the salon owner that's, you know, a mile away from your gym, that's got 5,000 people on his list that he cuts hair for, and all of them would be great candidates to train at your gym. Well, that person is a great person to build a relationship with and to partner with and to do things with where you can do things back and forth and synergistically. So the angel list is a list of 101 people like this. And that's what the assignment for you guys today is to go home and write down 101 names of people that are uh, either uh, leaders of businesses, organizations, school programs, youth programs, whatever it is, and that are in charge of those programs and have the ability to um, uh, put you in front of their audience um, that potentially will be your client. That is one of the most powerful exercises you could ever do. Um, And uh, that was point number five. Very cool. What if, no, (laughs) 
the Providence question boy. Um, what is that? No, I said, what if uh, the angel list? What if I only have 59? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, I had, to, like, I had to scold him a little bit. It was really funny. There was this, uh, there was this woman, very nice woman, uh, sitting in the front, like very in the front row. And I was like talking. And I started like getting all into it. I'm like talking and I felt myself like getting like really close to her and I could see her like this. She was like, kind of like cowering. Like, is this guy going to like jump on me? Like it's like, it was hilarious. Um, and I kept like apologizing to her. I was like, sorry, sorry. I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> it's really funny. It was, <laughs> a, it was a good crowd. Like a lot of little things, uh, cool things happened like that. I think there was some guy sleeping in the back. Uh, I definitely think he was completely passed out. Like, I don't know if he was drunk or what, but he was like out cold. He was dude, but he was like sleeping the whole time. Like I didn't put him to sleep. I think he like, like, I don't know if he was still sleeping from the presenter before me or something. He just never woke up. But um, yeah, there was some interesting, uh, interesting stuff flying around. We were at the social and the, the cool thing was, Ant, we had about 15 mastermind members at providence it was really cool like these guys Very were there cool. they brought their staffs it was a really really cool thing to see the spf mastermind have such a strong showing at the perform better event and um sitting there talking with um john doherty who um just is he's phenomenal phenomenal gym owner is killing it right now uh and we're uh, we're talking with devin gage who is also doing really well and was uh, Devin was actually the SPF gym owner of the year last year. And uh, actually John was the first runner up. Um, so I'm talking to these guys and a girl comes over and starts asking us, you know, questions and you could tell she was like, you know, she had a small business and um, she was asking about getting into the mastermind and she was almost like a little like shy about it. And she's like, how like much money do I need to be making to get into, you know, to get into mastermind? And, and, and the funny part was I looked over at John, who is doing, I think, $98,000 a month right now. Um, that's what that's what his business is generating, $98,000 $98, a month. And I look at him and I smile. And four years ago, I was like, John, where were you at when you joined the SPF Mastermind? Or I think you joined Surge and then the Mastermind. So I don't think he joined the Mastermind doing this. I think he joined Surge first. But um, he, he, he was at $4,000 a month four years ago wow and he's, at, and he's at 97 now and so he was like it was awesome he like he told her the story of like when how he went through surge um and it, it was incredible but that's like the cool things about these events it's like stuff like that happens like when you're like imagine like being a gym owner and you're like just starting out and you hear someone that's like doing the same amount of money you're doing and four years later they're like killing it and like but that's like it's still like the whole Roger Bannister principle. Like she, that girl yeah. probably didn't think that was possible to do in that short amount of time. She probably thinks like that's that's not that's not even fathomable. But now she's like literally talking eye to eye with the guy that just did it, right? So it's cool that, and that's why I love these events. I love the social part of it. I love the the questions that are asked. I love you know the the uh, although I didn't drink any beer. I love the, the I love, I've watched Boyle drink a lot of beer. I didn't drink any beer. He was making fun of me for <laughs> drinking water, but um that was uh 75 hard, so no no beer for me. Again, 75 hard. Yeah, it restarted um I think uh I can't remember when I started. I don't know. It's all blur. It's all blur. All right, well what do you got? For our listeners, Vince, uh, last time you said, I just want you to listen to my podcast. Go subscribe to my podcast. Um, the time for, before that, we, we talked about a webinar that you were doing. What's going on? So, uh, you know, I, I feel like everybody sometimes has my book, but I think there's a lot of people that don't have my book. And I think if you listen to the stuff and you get something out of it, like having a copy of my book. And reading it would probably be a really good idea. And so I'm going to gift your audience a copy of my book for free. Um, if you have it already. Um, well, if you have it already, here's my ask. <laughs> Send the link to a friend that you think would get value from it. That's my ask. If you already have a copy, if you read The Ultimate Guide to Marketing Your Gym, and you have a copy, or you've already read it, um, my ask for you is that you um, send the link to a friend and tell them, hey, I read this book and it wasn't that bad. Try it out. Um, 
if you haven't read my book and you want to read it, it's go to ask. Oh, sorry, not ask Vince. Uh, that's my podcast one. Um, it is <laughs> vincesfreebook.com. So if you want a, a, for, uh, a free copy, uh, it's a digital download, a free copy of the book, uh, Ultimate Guide to Marketing Your Gym. It's my kind of flagship book on marketing for gym owners. You go to vincesfreebook.com. Uh, Ant will put the link in the show notes and then um, hopefully you go and read it and enjoy it. All right, Vince. Well, thanks for doing this. Uh, great stuff as always. And um, we'll talk to you next month. Thanks, Ant. All right. What's up, guys? Thanks so much for listening. Do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. This way you'll get notified when we get new episodes come out. And if you really, really loved it, I'd truly appreciate it if you left us a five-star rating. So thanks so much. If you're looking for more free stuff uh, from me, head over to vincesfreebook.com. You'll get a free copy of my marketing book. And just head over to vincesfreebook.com and I'll send you a copy. Thanks.